All right, let's go through another board that's not turning on. This is an 8204924 with some liquid damage on it. So let's just take a look at what it looks like. So when we put it under the microscope, you'll see that it's pretty general. It's kind of it's a little bit spread out everywhere. You have these stains. Excuse me. You have these stains on it over here. Especially on the especially right on the edge of the board. This thing, there's no particular area that's really disgusting. There's just a little bit of disgusting, a little bit of everywhere. You do have some things that look bleh. But for the most part, nothing here really strikes me. There's the one thing that... Here we go. Yeah, that, that, that's gross. This area is like that on all of these boards. U, the U1950 area. So we can take a look at this, touch that area up a little bit, and see if it does anything. So That capacitor is gross. Now this is going to affect uh, whether or not we go into an SO state. So this is important. And as is usual, because it's important, it's missing from my donor. Okay, next donor. Missing from you. Great. <laughs> uh, really? Can nothing be simple? Nothing is simple, is it? Oh, boo. All right. I'll find it after I'm done removing these. Yep. Same old, same old. The first time I went over this issue was around June of last year on a board that was fixed for Sunny. An 820 3476. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scrape away at that until it sh reappears. There's not really much to have reappear there, so I'm going to have to draw a wire. That's fine. I'll draw a wire to extend it. Tweezers would help here. It's got to make it the right length. Alright, that's a happy little wire there. So, now I just gotta find myself a, a, a logic gate. Not a logic gate, that's a, that's a dual logic gate. Found one. Yay! Alright, so we're gonna remove it off of my donor board.
And place it right over here. Okay, now I'm just gonna place a capacitor there. This soldering setup always falls down because my desk is really tiny. Because my office is really tiny. You know, one thing I was looking at yesterday, I was just thinking to myself, if I, and again, I don't plan to still be in this business in 2023. God help me if I'm still doing this in 2023. But if I'm still here when my lease is up, I was thinking about this, you know, what, what would I do? Where would I go? And I was looking and there were so many spaces. I'm not kidding. They cost as much as the store costs and they're, and they're offices. And not only are they offices rather than stores at the same cost as the, as the store, but they're also crappier. So for all the complaining I do about the office, I really shouldn't. You know, for the amount of money I'm paying for this entire store, I could get an office that's smaller than the store on like the seventh floor of a building on a floor that I share with people and this the store, you know, I don't share it. You walk into this this the store and it's it's all mine. Yeah, I have no idea what I would do in two thousand twenty three if I was still in this business. I mean I would definitely wouldn't have a store anymore, I can tell you that much. I would have an office. But I was thinking, okay, if I spent the same amount of money that I spend on a store right now on an office, could I get a larger office or a nicer office? The answer is no, I'd actually have a downgrade and I would have a smaller space than I do now. It would be crappier than what I have now. And that just kind of, I don't know, maybe a little sad. It was, it was a little sad because I guess, I guess the work that I've done up until this point is not enough work to support having, uh, you know, some type of nice sexy office somewhere. I don't know why that bothered me. Because I don't really care about having a nice, sexy office. Like, it's not even something that I, that I would want. If it was available to me and I had the money for it, I would still get the cheaper, shittier office so that I could have the other money for my bank account or for a nice set of speakers or something. I don't know. It was just something that was in passing. Maybe my midlife crisis or something. Who knows? So what I'm going to do now to see if this thing is turning on, I'm going to plug it in. And let's see. So the first test I do is measure CPU vCore. Because remember, this model doesn't spin the fan when it turns on. Okay, I just said this model doesn't spin the fan when it turns on, and the fan is spinning. Well, it usually doesn't, unless it's trying to make me look like an idiot. So anyway, let's just go over in the schematic what was going on with this board, why it was dead, and uh, what we did to fix it. Because all I really did is I just I, I moved around the board a little bit, and then... I showed you something that looked nasty, but I didn't really show you what that is for or why it matters. So let's get into that on screen. So let's see. Okay, I got, my, I got a second open broadcaster monitor again. Oh, it was like 90 bucks. It was a couple of days of YouTube revenue. No, big, no biggie. Yeah, I like having a second monitor. It was worth it. Because, I mean, I'm cheap with a lot of stuff, but not being able to see what you guys are seeing or having it constantly switched to open broadcaster to see what you guys were seeing, that was a real pain in the ass. And it, it could literally ruin a whole video if I do the video in the wrong mode. So if I have the camera on and not the microscope camera, and I don't know that you don't see it, that... Okay, is it you? Here we go. So this, I see. This is a logic gate. This is a combination of two logic gates, right? So, we, so you know when we talk about the, the logic gate for the one-wire circuit? Let's just open up an old schematic that has that. Because this is a circuit that you guys are all familiar with by now. If you have A and B, and it's being powered by 3.42 volts, you get Y. So if you have A and B, and this thing is getting voltage it needs to turn on, it will shoot out power on Y. This is kind of like a dual version of the same thing. So it's one chip, U1950, but it has A, B, and then Y, and then A, B, and then Y. And as you can see, Apple designers were a little confused. It says, no stuff, WTF, or W... My brain reads that as WTF. You know, it says WF. No stuff, do we need this? 
and uh, they, they're not really sure. So as you can see here, you have all system power good on the left. If all system power good and CPU VR P good are present, you get PM SO P good, and God help Jason if he keeps not turning the air filter off before he leaves. Um, and then if you have those, you get PM SO P good. Now, if you have PMSOP good, as well as SMC delayed power good, if you have those, then you get SysPower OK, which then becomes PMPCH SysPower OK. PMPCH SysPower OK is going to go, uh, where was that? It goes to the SMC, I believe. Yeah, that's the SMC. But then it also goes over to the PCH. And this is system power management. This is the uh, PCH chip. Pad, which is platform control hub. It's very, very similar to what the North Bridge and the South Bridge do. The PCH is kind of like a North Bridge, a South Bridge, and all in one. And it also deals with the Intel integrated video and the CPU. So what this does is if you have the signals present on the left, it will give you the signals present on the right. So once you get these signals present on the left, then you'll get all the stuff on the right. So this is just one of the system power OK signals that's required. And if you go back over here, it'll give you a little an idea of what you need. So you need to be in an SO state, obviously. If you're not getting to an SO state for at least a quarter of a second, you're not going to have PP3V3 SO. You're not going to have this. You have the CPU has to be ready. And if all of that is good, then PM, PCH, Sys power OK comes on. And the, what was burned over here was the PP3V42 underscore G3 hot leg as always, along with this capacitor. These machines always corrode in the exact same spot every single time. For some reason, that's just what it is. It's very predictable. Do let me know what you think of the camera angle. I'm not a big fan. I, I, in the beginning, I was a fan of the camera being up there. It keeps tilting. It's a weird camera angle. The one thing I do like about the camera being up there is if I want to film something Jason's doing, it's easy to just turn it around. And it also keeps the camera out of the way of, of my desk, which as is has no space. I also like the fact that it actually gives me an angle with the multimeter. It was really helpful in that earlier backlight video I did being able to show you the multimeter. So just always be on the lookout for liquid damage. Look really close. Again, the, they, they corrode in the same spot. It's, just, it's consistent. And the thing that I keep telling people, look before you ultrasonic because that's going to get washed away by the ultrasonic. And once you ultrasonic it away, and once that little, little bit of green, a little bit of burn is ultrasonic away, it's going to be 10 times harder for you to actually find that after the fact. That's why I work on the board. When I'm done working on the board, I ultrasonic it when I'm done. If I'm really getting confused or screwed with, or something is going on that just seems really uh, out of the ordinary kinky, then I throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and we'll see if it fixes it. But I keep, I keep track in my head of what looked corroded, just so that when I put it on the cleaner, all my hints aren't gone. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.